All right, so we have all of these various types and specializations, but how do we actually compare the CPU performance differences between different types? We know some might have more CPU and more memory, but you know, what are those cores actually equal in terms of actual performance? And so Azure Compute Units, also known as ACUs, are a way to compare CPU performance between different types and sizes of virtual machine. It's a Microsoft created performance benchmark. So they took one of their A series virtual machines and started it at 100 and then equate all your different other you know, instance types to that one. And so essentially you can say, look, a VM with an ACU of 200 has twice the performance of a VM with an ACU of 100. And a good way to really look at all of this is to go to the OS reference documentation for Windows virtual machines or Linux virtual machines. And they have, Microsoft will actually list all of these out for you. And these are actually great sites, you know, just from a deployment aspect and revision for the exam, highly encourage you to check them out. And if we go to the Windows one here, what we'll see as this pops up is a section called Concepts in here. If we expand that out, you'll see VM types and sizes. But if you scroll a little bit further down in types and sizes, you'll see Azure Compute Units here. And if we expand this out, you can, you can see here you know, the SKU families, A0, A1 to 4, and you can see he has the ACU number. So if we compare, say, anything in the A1 to 4, A5 to A7, these all got at 100. And if we go down to something, you know, like a DS1, V2, you know, the performance there is going to be 210. The other thing to note is, you know, this 2 to 1 ratio that you'll see on the V3s and the, you know, the DV3s and the EV3s. And this is because they are now hyper-threaded. So, for example, a DV2 might give you, you know, 210 to 250 on the ACU number, but when you go up to the V3, you're actually getting less performance. So it's just something to keep in mind, you know, as you start to, you know, invest in your instance types in Azure, definitely, you know, com compare these so you know what you're actually getting. Don't just go by the pricing calculator if it's something that you're doing that, that you know, depends on CPU. Next, we need to cover one of the key parts of the curriculum as well, which is identifying supported workloads on Azure. And we'll start with the Windows ecosystem. If we look at the OSs, first of all, and we look at pre-Windows 2008 R2, so these are things like Windows 2003, they are supported for deployment. However, you must bring your own image, and there's no marketplace support at all. And you also need to have your own custom support agreement. You know, Microsoft's not going to give you any type of support for Windows 2003, you know, via Azure. Uh, when we get to Windows 2008 R2, that is supported. However, there's a specific support matrix for server roles that you want to check. So just because Windows Server 2008 R2 is the OS is supported, you do need to check the matrix of server roles that you're going to install on top of the server and check that those are supported. Uh, things like Windows Server 2012, supported. There's actually a data center version in the marketplace. Windows Server 2016 is supported. There's a data center and a nano version in the marketplace. Uh, and for desktop OSs, those are supported for Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise, which are available in the marketplace. And there's another link here that's very, very useful. Uh, and if you click on this one, it'll actually also give you details of other Microsoft server software that's supported on Azure. So it goes beyond just the operating system. And if we scroll down a little bit on this web page, we can see uh, things like Microsoft BizTalk Server, Microsoft Dynamics, Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So within the Microsoft ecosystem, Dynamics CRM is an example, 2013 and later versions are supported. And they list these for a whole host of things. It's very common to run um, you know, Exchange, which is supported again for 2013 and later if you're not using Exchange online. Uh, and there's some other options here as well. So this, this link will give you you know, any other information you need around the specific workloads that are supported. But for now, you know, at least for the curriculum of the exam, you may get asked on these these variations, but for the most part, I'd say just revise the, the operating systems and you, and you should be good to go. As far as Linux supported distributions go, all the major ones are pretty much accounted for here. So we have CentOS, Debian, Oracle Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, SUSE Linux, etc. And another link here you can go to if you need to check, you know, what Linux distributions are endorsed. If we hit this link here, we can see it takes us to this page and all of the current supported Linux distributions are here. So currently for Red Hat, it's 6.7 plus and 7.1 plus. So I try to remember those. CentOS 6.3, 7.0 and SUSE 
11 and 12 are supported as well. All right, so we might be thinking we've got our types, our various supported OS distributions. Can we do it anywhere? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. There are, in fact, regional limitations on services in Microsoft Azure. And the screenshot here, I'm just showing the various compute products that are available in the various regions. And if you just take a look at this, look at the B series as an example. It's available in East US and West US 2 only at the time of recording this course. You know, A8 to A11 instances, only four regions those are available in. And so this is important to know just because you decided, hey, I want this, this particular type of instance, you need to make sure it's actually available in your region, you know, because you're not going to onboard every single region necessarily to your organization. In addition, it's worth understanding region pairs. So East US is paired with West US. And what that means is when Microsoft does their patching, they will patch one of those regions than the other one. They won't do those at the same time. If you don't use region pairs, and let's say you went North Central and East US, they could be patched at the same time. So in the rare event that there is an outage, you could have a, a global outage to your Azure infrastructure if those are the only two regions that you use. So it's worth also keeping in mind the region pairs as well. And finally, before we get into the demos, the last thing you just need to be aware of is restricted usernames that you'll see when we go into the demo as well. So, you know, here is a, a general list, you know, things like administrator, admin, user. A lot of this is common sense. You know, you can't use these for your VM usernames when you create your Azure VMs.